Okay, I've had a, a, several people ask me, if I had to choose, would I choose the 891 or the KX2? Which one would I choose? Let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly what this video is about right up front. That way, if you don't like it, you can click away right away. I'm gonna be comparing the Elecraft KX2 to the Yezu 891. And I'm just gonna be shooting from the hip. I did not write a script. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna spew out my opinion. Now, for those of you that don't wanna hear that, thank you, goodbye. Now, those of you that stayed with me, Let's listen. Okay, look how small this thing is. It's great, right? First of all, this is the Elecraft KX2, and I love this radio. Uh, max output is 10 watts. It's kind of, it's a little bit complicated at first, but it's still pretty simple. You can kind of figure your way around this radio and figure things out, and there's menus, and you can change the, the volume on the monitor. Um, to me, Sideband is, I've had no luck at all, pretty much with side. I've owned this about a year and a half. If I try to contact people using single sideband, it's probably not going to happen. Okay, I've seen other people online do it, but whenever I try it, no one hears me. Okay, so basically, in my mind, single sideband on this radio doesn't work. And all I can think is two things is number one, 10 watts is not enough for single sideband number one. And number two, there's not that many people out there that respond to CQs on single sideband anymore. I don't know why. Now, if it was a contest and you were in a really good spot on a really high mountain or something, that it might work. I just kind of, after a while, just gave up and I pretty much only use this for CW. Now, look how small it is. Tell me, this thing weighs like four or five pounds. This thing weighs like less than a pound. Look at that. Look at all these things hanging off of this, right? Of course this is smaller. Of course this is nicer to carry around. Built-in antenna tuner. That's freaking awesome, right? It's awesome. It's small. It's lightweight. I've even got this little extra cover you put on it. You can you can take this. It's, it's portable. CW, throw it in your bag. It's going to work. It's great. People are going to hear you if you're in a good location. <clears throat> great. Built-in antenna tuner. Um, you can have batteries in, in, internal to this, but I don't because it's not that hard just to carry a battery and connect it. So all in all, okay, audio. Audio on here is great. It sounds wonderful, super clear. But they have a built-in speaker, unlike my U-Kits. Built-in speaker sounds wonderful. It's freaking awesome. Love this radio. But, but guess what? The sunspot cycle and the bands have been just awful. They're awful, and, and people don't hear me on this that well. Like I said, I'm pretty much stuck to CW. That's fine, but it's limiting. And so, also, this is what, how much does this cost? I can't remember. Something like $1,000. You have to remember, this is the Yezu 891. I started out with the 857, 897. That thing was huge. This is the first radio I ever got was the Yezu 897, I think that's the number. And it was about that thick. And it came out here, and then I got that bolt-on antenna tuner. The thing was a brick. It was like lifting a cinder block. And so when this came out, or it came out a long time ago, but when I decided to buy this at literally like $600, almost half the price of the KX2, and it had 100 watts, I was like, man, there's something to that. That's There's something to this that's pretty cool. Is the audio as good as a Elecraft? No. It's still kind of like, there's still a lot of static. And that radio, the KX2, is quiet. This is not quiet, no matter what you do. Uh, the menus on here. I'm going to just, I'm going to put a battery in this thing and just show you. So I hooked up an insufficient battery to this radio just so I could, so I could show you pain in the ass that I have with this. This is going to be hard. So here's what I don't like about this radio. I want to change bands. What do I have to do? I have to go 
click this button, roll this around. It goes so slow. Look at that, how slow. I have to roll it and roll it. Sorry, this is really hard. So to change bands is a pain in the butt because you have to roll it like three times before it turns. I hate that. Okay, that's the first thing I hate. The second thing is I want to change power. I want to up. I want to go down power. I want to go down in power so I can key up. And so go down in power. You have to hold this down. Go to the menus. Click on the thing. Raise it up. Oh wait, that's not the right one. Then go up. You have to do all that crap just to change the power. That's a pain in the butt. If they just had some kind of power on here where you could go up and down like my iCom, you just click it and you go down and you're done. Here you have to go through the menu system. That sucks. All right, we want to menu. We want to change bands. Roll it. Roll it. I'm changing bands. I'm changing power. I want to go to 40 meters. Okay, I want to change modes. I often go over here to FM so I can key down and tune, right? But then I have to go back, hold it down, go back. It's all that menu crap that makes me not, that, that's annoying about this radio, okay? So I've talked about the things that annoy me with this radio, and it is a little bit bigger, quite a bit bigger, quite a bit heavier, but guess what? I almost like this radio better. Do you know why? Because 100 watts, that's why. And now you can you can give me that whole, oh, you only get so many decibels. Every, every watt you go up, you get so many. Yeah, well, the difference between making a contact and not making a contact is 5 watts compared to 100 watts, 90 watts. I make contact after contact after contact on this thing. That thing, like I said, is for single sideband is not an option. Here, I might make a contact on this thing. I have a good shot at it. Now, you might be saying, well, QRP is cool. It's awesome. Why don't you do QRP? I love QRP. I do. But think about my situation. My situation it might be different than yours. I'm not just going out trying to make one contact. See, I am doing a YouTube video. And for a YouTube video to be successful, in my mind, and to be interesting, I have to go out and make a contact. Do you see? So if I go out and try to make a single sideband contact on this and, and a, a, a uh, CW contact, I might fail on this. And what I end up with is a video, a YouTube video, where I don't make a contact. And to me, that is not content. That is not interesting. I didn't talk to anyone. But when I go out with this thing, and this stupid freaking microphone. Um, yeah, it's bigger. Yeah, it's heavier. But guess what? I'm going to make a contact, especially on CW. If you pump 90 watts into a CW signal, into a long wire, you're going to make a contact. Bands bad or not, as long as people are out there and listening at all, you're going to make a contact. This question mark. This contact. Single sideband is way more likely on this than that. So is this scientific? Am I telling you something scientific? Should you run out and buy a Yezu 891 over KX2? No. Like I said, I'm going out to making videos. I'm making ham radio videos. I have to make a contact. I have two hours from the time I leave to the time I set up, the time I get back. I have a very short window, you see? I'm not retired. I have to work full time. I've got two kids. I have these very short windows and the weather also has to cooperate in some way. So I have these short windows. So do I gravitate towards the 891, which is heavier and takes more power and it's got to carry more crap with me? Yeah, because I want to get that contact in. It makes for a more interesting video. It makes for more contacts. It makes for better practice. Do I, do I like QRP? Yes, I like QRP. I like three watts. Do I want a mount mountain topper? I would love to have a mountain topper. I would love to. I really want to buy a mountain topper. Those things are like this big. And they only have like two watts, one watt. And I like my U-Kits. But like I said, when I'm going out and I want to make a contact, I want to make a video, I want to make a contact, okay? So that's why I'm going to choose the 891 at $600 especially if you're new. If, if you're a newbie, 
go with go with the hundred watt rig. You don't go QRP. If you are brand new to ham radio, don't do QRP. Don't because it's way more frustrating. You want practice. You want to make contacts. You want to be heard. Okay. QRP is for advanced people that want to struggle. They like I like the idea of the tiny little tiny little radio that you take on vacation that you can make a contact. It's very rewarding. It's awesome, especially if you know CW. It's super awesome and cool. But when you want to make a contact, send 100 watts or more, okay? That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. It may not be the best opinion, but I make a lot of contacts with this thing, heavy as it is, and I like my bars. I was able to get rid of a wire, by the way, when I went to manual tuner. Oh, that's another thing. This thing doesn't have a tuner, so you have to carry a tuner with you. And it has to be able to handle 100 watts. Uh, the menus suck. It's a pain in the butt to go back and forth between menu and power, menu and power. I wish they had the power right here. Uh, you know, it has its problems. It's not as good at audio, but it makes the contacts. And so I'm going to shut up because I'm rambling now. And that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it.